Grand Rising to all of the Unbothered. Welcome to the first episode of Unmasking Divine Nine. If you guys have yet to actually listen to the introduction, please go back and do so before I begin with the first of Divine Nine, which will be Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, the pink and green sisters. So let's start with a little bit of history. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Inc., a.k.a., is the first historically African-American sorority. The sorority was founded on January 15th of 1908 at the historically black Howard University in Washington, D.C., by a group of 16 students led by Ethel Hedgeman Lyle, forming a sorority broke barriers for African-American women in areas where they had little power or authority due to a lack of opportunities for minorities and women in the early 20th century. Alpha Kappa Alpha was incorporated on January 29th of 1913. The sorority is one of the nation's largest Greek letter organizations having had more than 350,000 members, 1,024 chapters in the United States and several other countries. Women may join through undergraduate chapters at a college or university, or they may be invited to join by a graduate chapter after acquiring an undergraduate or advanced college degree. Alpha Kappa Alpha is part of the National Pan-Hellenic Council, known as NPHC. The current international president is Danette Anthony Reed, and the sorority's documents and pictorial archives are located at Moreland Springarn Research Center. Now, along with that, How about we go over some of the famous AKAs? Now, some of the famous AKAs, especially the ones who are in politics, you have um, current VP Kamala Harris, you have Rep. Sheila Jackson Lee, Coretta Scott King, Bernice King, as well as Rosa Parks. Now, as far as AKAs in music, TV, and film, you have actress Felicia Rashad, you have Vanessa Bell Calloway, Miss Loretta Devine, Star Jones, Wanda Sykes, Tracy Ellis Ross, and you also have honorary members. Now, from what I understand, individuals who are honorary members, such as Tracy Ellis Ross and Michael, I mean, Michelle Obama, these are individuals who did not get their Greek letters in college. But because they were ready to walk through a certain door, they had to take an oath somewhere. Not sure exactly what type of rituals they may have had to endure, but I was told that they had to take an oath. That is what they are called an honorary member. I say all that to say this. Oftentimes we say that in order to get to a certain stage in life in this world, specifically, especially in America, you had to have taken an oath. You take that oath either through the black letter Greek organizations or you can take your oaths um, in Prince Hall if you're a black person. If you're not, you can go to um, Freemasonry and you can sign your oath that way. So to my understanding, that is what is meant by honorary members. Okay, someone who has to take the oath because they have reached a certain stage in life. They have to be responsible to something. They have to answer to someone. That's the only way you can make it through certain doors. Okay, now let's get on to a little bit of history about what these people are really about instead of what they tell you on the Internet. Now, Greek organizations are actually um, they're pagan worshipers. Now, understand that. Polytheistic pagan worshipers are basically taken over because Kamala Harris is our current VP and she is a member, as I stated, of Alpha Kappa Alpha, which is a pagan Greek sorority cult. These are cults. This is why 
they praise gods, not God. There is a difference. Now, all Greek pagan cults were started by the Jesuits, and they collect collegiate manure off of every head. Roman society going back to when the blacks were the face of the throne and it was a god-king empire, they had pagan cults. Romans are not the people of the one God Almighty. They are polytheistic pagans. The pagan cults recruit from prominent families throughout the society, so many members of the church are secret members of pagan cults. As pagans worship their gods through S, blood, and necromancy, the initiation process of the Divine Nine, and the AKAs especially, is allegedly brutal. It involves beatings, psychological and physical, as well as SA, including same-sex SA. The recruits are taught to stay together at all times. The women have to have S relations with cult males, usually all of them. So these cult women are Oloshots. They all have to slet themselves out in order to pay cult initiation fees and raise money for the temple. Cults are temple slavery invented by the ancient Egyptians and Babylonians. This is why all of them push LBGT because there is a lot of people that are undercover and possess this mindset because of the bloodline in their pagan practices, right? So we get that part. And if you think I'm going a little too far by saying that they are slutted out, allow me to give you a little information on some proof. Now there was a scandal that occurred in 2019 where AKA sorority had to respond to a prostitution scandal that rocked the HBCU campus. Why don't you go ahead and read along with me? Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Inc. has responded to reports of a prostitution ring allegedly orchestrated by one of its members at Fort Valley State University. The alleged ringleader, Alicia Janetta Johnson, 49, was indicted on April 5th of 2019 and has since been charged with six counts of prostitution, three counts of pimping, and two counts of solicitation of sodomy. Six men were also indicted on one count each of solicitation of sodomy. Johnson served as an executive assistant to the president of Fort Valley State University and was a graduate advisor to the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Inc. On Monday, April 15th, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Inc. released a statement from its executive director, Cynthia Howell, exclusively to rolling out. And I quote, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Incorporated, now in our 111th year, is an organization committed to cultivating unity, health, education, and human rights among women and confronting issues that concern our more than 300,000 members in 1,021 chapters around the globe. Yeah. Yeah. So, basically, Anytime something like this peaks to surface, and this is actually the first of its kind that I've seen, you do have several people all across um, the internet, all across Divine Nine, <clears throat> coming out on the internet and letting people know that they are denouncing their membership to these organizations because things like this go on. Now, a lot of people don't know when you enter into these organizations, you need to have some type of money. Some type of money because you have fees to pay. You have dues to pay. This is about money. This is why many of them allegedly pimp out their pledges. They need money. So the poor black girl that's coming there and just wants a sisterhood, right? 
she's going to be the one to be pimped out the most because she doesn't have the money. And they're aware of this. They're clearly aware of this. Now, you can also see evidence of things like this. I don't know how old you might be watching this, but Spike Lee did a movie years ago called School Days. And you can see at the end where the main girl, who was played by Tisha Campbell, was pimped out by her frat boyfriend because all she was was a piece of me. Allegedly, they all sleep with each other. Allegedly, according to people who have denounced their membership, women sleep with women, men sleep with men, and they all sleep with each other. It's common practice. This is why if you are married or in a relationship with a divine nine member or a member of any type of Masonic organization, understand they are going to cheat. They are going to cheat. It is a part of their organization. It is frowned upon if they do not sleep with one another. It can get you in trouble. For example, Kamala Harris got to the top allegedly by sleeping with married man Willie, Willie Brown. Willie Brown had been married for 30 years and he was flaunting Kamala Harris around like he had no wife anywhere. Willie Brown is a Prince Hall Freemason. I told you they are all connected. Every single one of them, they are all connected. Look at the Kamala Harris case. I, there is really no doubt in my mind that Nathan Wade is associated with some type of Masonic organization as well. They all sleep with each other. But not only do they all sleep with each other, not only are most of the women slutted out, not only are most of the men allegedly bent over, but there's also hazing rituals. And these hazing rituals cannot be denied because I have so many hazing stories specifically from AKAs going back to the early 2000s, some even in the 90s. Allegedly, something occurred after 1990 where after a pledge had passed away due to hazing, they had to change their practices. So they tell everyone else in the world who is stupid enough to listen that hazing is against their rules. So now they call it something called underground hazing. And it's not too underground because everyone knows that they do it. Why do you think every single time there is a death, and there is often deaths, allegedly many of these deaths are actually covered up to look like accidents. The only reason why we are aware of these hazing deaths who have been brought to the media are because people spoke out and said that they were hazing deaths. Can you imagine how many of these hazing deaths actually occurred and were buried or covered up as mere accidents? Now, what goes on with hazing, you might ask? Well, before I read you a few of these stories, because there are dozens and dozens, we will be here all day. Let me tell you what I believe hazing actually is. It is a form of energy harvesting. Think about what it involves. Think about it. It involves essay, right? It involves ritualistic practices, right? That induct fear from the person who is subject to the abuse. They will force you to eat dog food. They will beat you with whips. They will beat you with paddles. They will force you into um, actually explicit, explicit situations. They will SA you as often as they feel like it. They will put you out in the middle of the woods and make you fear for your life. Just think about it. When you think about in energy harvesting, this is what it means. It means pulling energy and using certain tactics in order to pull that energy from an individual. What makes hazing any different than energy harvesting? The point of hazing is to break you down so that whoever you were before that hazing ritual will be broken down. And then once you are broken down, it is their job as demonic entities that they are to fill you up 
with what they want you to be filled up with. Build in order to destroy. Right? Right? So follow along. Let's look at one of the first cases concerning these hazing rituals. Now, one of the most recent cases that I was able to find, from the AKAs at least, would be one from 2021. This occurred in Baton Rouge. A Southern University sorority is under investigation following allegations of unsanctioned activities. The SU Office of Student Affairs received a complaint about the Beta Psi chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha. According to a university spokesperson, the organization has been placed under cease and desist while an investigation takes place. This makes the third Greek life organization to fall under pressure from officials in the month of March, just last week. Fraternities from LSU and SU were suspended due to allegations of wild partying and hazing. Right? So that's just one incident. And let me also say, these universities will never, ever, ever permanently suspend any of the divine nine. It will never happen. All this is, is a way to shut everyone else up and make the universities think, or so the universities can make everyone else think that they actually care. They do not. It will continue. Now, another one that we have is from 2018. Looks like a dozen Alpha Kappa Alpha pledges at the University of Pittsburgh notified the police, they called the police, about a possible hazing incident within the chapter, officials said. The university on Thursday suspended the sorority until further notice. A mother noticed bruises on her daughter's arms while visiting her at the University of Pittsburgh, which prompted her to call the police. The woman's daughter told her she had been involved in sorority hazing of pledges. Penn Hills Police Chief Howard Burton said the mother, her daughter, and the other students met with police, but Burton said he has not determined whether a crime occurred or charges should be filed. The national chapter did not respond to request a comment. During the course of this, they were maybe hit with a paddle of some sort, Burton said. We've got a lot of girls who don't want to talk about it. If they don't want to be victims, they're not a heck of a lot that we can do. Now, this, this is what the police is saying to these people who are coming in. Now, mind you, who else is involved with the Divine Nine and the Masonic Order? The police. That's why a lot of this stuff is swept under the, under the rug. Many of the police officers are a part of this thing. The fraternal order of the police is right next to Freemasonry. There's really not much of a difference other than the fraternal order of the police. They wear badges. This is why you cannot tell on a fellow officer you've taken an oath. This is why you're putting your life at risk. You're taking an oath. That is the point of taking an oath. You need to be held accountable if you spill any of the secrets. Now, speaking of hazing and Divine Nine members, right? Let me tell you something else that these Divine Nine members absolutely enjoy doing. They enjoy using the police to do their dirty work. Don't believe me? Let me tell you a little story that we know about Miss Kamala Harris. Now, early in Kamala's political career in the 1990s, Kamala Harris had the backing of California's wealthiest families that control the state's democratic political machine. Right? Now, she wasn't just some celebrities, all but anonymous plus one, Cruz wrote, who was responsible for the article. She was featured in the photo coverage of the hot ticket affair smiling wide decked out in a dark gown 
with a drink in her hand. Kamala Harris allegedly utilized police officers known as Masonic police officers. They had special badges, were the actual police, who knows? They may deny it. But one thing that I can say, one thing for sure, two for certain, something went on there. You see, the Prince Hall Freemasons also have influence among black Greek sororities and fraternities, correct? Now, Willie Brown was a Prince Hall Freemason. But let me tell you who else was also a part of the AKA. Two white women. Did you know that Hillary Clinton was an Alpha Kappa Alpha? Did you know that Hillary Clinton is an honorary member of Alpha Kappa Alpha? Did you know that? So that means that all of the wicked things that the Clintons are allegedly involved with, Alpha Kappa Alpha is tied right into it. Not only Hillary Clinton, it's alleged that even Margaret Sanger was a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha are one of the divine nine sororities it's alleged i'm going to say that one is alleged because i tried to follow it up and find out more information and was not able to do so right so now what we're going to do after we found out all all of that information right let's look at their rituals because i have the entire thing right let's look at their initiation now it looks like their ceremony has several parts, right? You have part one, which is the service to open with prayer. We know which God they're praying to. It's definitely not the one that I serve, right? You have part two, um, a speaker or a Bible reading. We'll read Ruth 1, 16 through 17. The Eastern stars um, also represent Ruth as well, right? For part three, they will read the palm, the ivy. And for part four is the Basilia Statement. Let me check out the Basilia Statement. Now, Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha operates within the national organization according to a constitution which meets the requirement for affiliation. Chapters systematically work to include in its membership outstanding college women from different racial blah, blah, blah. The pledge, I blah, blah, blah desiring to become a loyal and faithful member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, do pledge myself to respect, obey, and defend the Constitution, bylaws, and rituals of the organization and to abide by all the rules and regulations of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. After all the candidates have taken the vow and signed their name in the pledge book, the sentinel gives each a lightened pink or green candle and a small pot of ivy. While this is being done, the Basilius repeats the last two lines of the ivy hymn. So let my life the ivy be. So let my life like the ivy be, a help to man and a wreath for thee. The Basilius is encouraged to commit to ceremony this portion of the ceremony so that she can use her hands and facial expressions to convey the meaning and sacredness of the ceremony. The sorors are supposed to clasp their hand and sing on their hymn. It looks like the Dean of Pledges reassemble the pledges and sorors, gives appropriate word of welcome to Ivy membership and presents to each pledge the following a, they get an Ivy pin. B, the Ivy Club manual. C, Alpha Kappa Alpha, our 60 years of service. D, schedule of assignments of orientation material to be studied concerning the purpose of Ivy Leaf Pledge Club, the purposes of history, ideals. You also have probation and initiation. The period from beginning of the probation period to the end of initiation ceremony is a time of great anxiety for these women. I wonder why. 
so the initiation ritual here's where we get to the stuff the degrees one you have devotion and promise okay the setting is on a tablecloth covered in white is a huge white candle entwined with ivy representing the founder Soro Ethel Hegelman Lyle for that degree only the Baselius and Pilate wear a black ac- academic gown and the candidate wear black dress each candidate should have a white candle like this this is so ritualistic this is this is very ritualistic now this is what it says it says you have chosen alpha kappa alpha as your sorority your choice is a wise one i'm sure many people would disagree with that especially the ones that are no longer here but we'll continue alpha kappa alpha sorority is more than a sisterhood it is a symbol they say it's a symbol of love i consider it to be a symbol of death but that is just my opinion now they go on um to state some things um, because their things are fidelity and love and faith and trust all this nonsense that none of them live up to um, ever ever now the initiation hymn is hell alpha kappa alpha dear we greet thee here tonight and may this noble sisterhood be always our delight they repeat that three times you know they work in three six and nine it says we love our motto good and true and strive to do the right by culture by merit too we'll climb to glory's height now when cares of life or taker the pledge is to thee o alpha kappa alpha we pledge our hearts our minds our strength to foster their teachings obey the laws and make the supreme in service to all mankind o alpha kappa alpha we greet thee now i want you to notice for one in this they do um <clears throat> bring up the boule I've looked at a few of the initiation hymns. <clears throat> Many of the things are copywritten. This is why I just slip through. You know, I, I just slice through. I don't read the entire thing because, um, you know, I don't need any issues from YouTube, right? So that's why I just skim through this. But I notice in many of their initiations and in their rituals, they do say something about the um, about the boule. Um, now it says our password, the password shall be changed each biennium. It shall be the name of the last chapter established before the meeting of the boule. The password for this biennium is, you know, and then whatever the password might be. But the boule is also is often brought up because they are part of that boule, right? They are part of that boule. Are we aware of exactly what the boule means? What I might do is just break down what the boule means after I'm done delving into Divine Nine, simply because Divine Nine has so much going on that I don't want to take away from just them. And I don't want to get into the whole boule thing while I'm currently speaking on Alpha Kappa Alpha specifically. But I also wanted to get into why these individuals use S as a weapon. Now, back in the day, right, because these people basically take a lot of these rituals from the ancient mystery school. This has been going on for, for quite some time, centuries, before any of us were thought of <laughs> that are currently alive right now. This has been going on for centuries. So let's take a look at where this sacred prostitution comes from. Yes, they call it sacred prostitution. It's called sacred prostitution, temple prostitution, cult prostitution, and religious prostitution. Yes, I can't make this up. Now, these are purported rites consisting of paid intercourse performed in the context of religious worship, possibly as a form of fertility rite or divine marriage. Scholars prefer the terms sacred S-E-X or sacred actual rights. In cases where payment for services is not involved, the, histo- the historicity of literal sacred prostitution, particularly in some places and periods, is a controversial topic within the academic world. Historically, mainstream 
history has considered it a probate reality based on abundance of ancient sources and chroniclers, detailed as practices. Now, although it has proved harder to differentiate between true prostitution and sacred prostitution, authors have also interpreted evidence as secular prostitution administered in the temple under the patronage of fertility deities. This was done to worship deities. You understand? Deities. This was from ancient Greek, right? What are these that we're talking about? Black Greeks. Now, the Greek term, Herodo, has sometimes been taken to mean sacred holy woman, but it is more likely to refer to a former slave freed from slavery in order to be dedicated to a god. There were different levels of prostitutes within ancient Greece society, but two categories are specifically related to sacred or temple prostitution. All right, now let's check this out. The first category are heteris, also known as courtiances, typically more educated women that serve within the temples, right? Within the temples would probably be your eastern stars, your elks, right? These are the women that are in the temples. The second category are known as herodules, slave women or female priests who worked within temples and served the actual request of visitors to the temple. This is what Divine Nine does. They sleep with whoever they are told to sleep with. I guess they call it taking one from the team now, right? Now, while there may not be a direct connection between temples and prostitutions, many prostitutes and courtians worshipped Aphrodites. Aphrodites, right? The goddess of love. Prostitutes would use their earnings to pay for her dedications and ritualistic ceremonies in honor of Aphrodites. Some prostitutes also viewed the action of actual service and actual pleasure is an act of devotion to the goddess of love, worth worshiping Aphrodite through an act rather than a physical dedication. In the temple of Apollo at Bula Regia, a woman was found buried with an inscription reading, adulteress, prostitute, seize me because I fled from Bula Regia. It has been speculated she might have been a woman forced into sacred prostitution as a punishment for adultery. So, if you put all of this together, right? All of this together. The fact that these people use sacred prostitution. The fact that they worship Greek gods. Not the Most High God, but Greek gods. Each fraternity and sorority has their own god or goddess period there is no exception right the fact that they use hazing rituals because this is not hazing these are hazing rituals that are getting worse and worse hazing rituals and I believe the people that passed were a form of sacrifice just like I believe the hazing within itself is a form of energy harvesting But see, that's just the way my mind thinks. I refuse to keep calling hazing, hazing within itself. That is a ritual. It is a form of energy energy harvesting. We're just going to call it out as what it is. Right? They use the police to do their bidding. Same thing that um, Tiffany Hinyard was doing. Same thing Kamala Harris allegedly did when she was AG of California. I remember interviewing an old woman who stated that she sent the Masonic police to her home. This is not alleged. This is what the woman told me. Because she wanted her property. Right? Anytime you see a Divine Nine member, anywhere, and I mean anywhere, hell will surely follow. Think about the fact that they're involved with the Clintons. 
and all of the wickedness surrounding them. Because a lot of people really don't know who Divine Nine is outside of black America. They don't know. Or at least they act like they don't. But I tell you who the Clintons are. Everyone's aware of the Clintons. Everyone's aware of their alleged misdeeds. And now that you know Hillary Clinton is an AKA. How you like that? Right? Right? Now they can allege that these things don't happen. And of course they'll say these things don't happen. She doesn't know what she's talking about. But I've given you too much information. If I sat here and read all of the hazing rituals that I found, I would be here all day. I only read two. I actually have ten more. But as you see, we're at 35 minutes. And I tried to pour in as much information as possible. I don't want to have to make this a two-parter. I want it to be one and done. Because when we get to the men, it's going to get a lot deeper. The male fraternities are going to need two parts apiece. Because I got videos and everything to go with those. But anyway, before thinking about joining any organization, remember this. For one, if you're trying to join Divine Nine and you have no money, you will be slutted out to pay for your fees and your initiations. Two, if you are LBGT and you are hard up finding a man, join a frat. Just stay on the DL. Three, sacred prostitution is a real thing. It goes all the way back to ancient Greek. This is why they are so comfortable with this because they are black Greeks, right? This is what they learn. This is what they do. This is what they push. They can't say that the thing with pimping out the pledges doesn't happen. I read you an entire article. I'm sure that's probably the last time somebody will come out and talk in such a big, in such a big article. I was surprised that he even got that amount of attention. Maybe it was an election year or something like that. Cause usually stories like that are swept under the rug, right? I'm not the only one you can hear this from. You can go online right now and you can see dozens upon dozens upon dozens of Divine Nine members denouncing their membership. They are sick of it. They are sick of the way that they are treated. They are sick of the type of demands that are placed on them. And they're probably sick of their energy being harvested through these rituals that they have. They're sick of it. So I've given you enough evidence to come and try to debunk me if you want to. And also, please, please research Mr. Steve Coakley. None of us would be aware of this knowledge the way that we are if it was not for Steve Coakley. He was the first person to speak on the boule, what they did, what they were about, and what their goal was. Unfortunately, he is no longer with us. But may you rest in power, Mr. Steve Coakley. Right? Not only looking at that, looking at Kamala Harris and what she's done, Tiffany Henyard, what they've done. Have you ever met an AKA that was nice? I've never met an AKA that didn't make me want to throw up in my mouth. Never. I had one as a supervisor before and I dreamt about burying her every night. She was just a very wicked, wicked wicked woman you also have people coming out online telling stories of things that they've had to endure pledging these people specifically aka's someone said that and and, and th this is another thing a lot of people join these organizations especially ones who are not from rich families because they don't have any money they don't have any connections. They don't have any people. But what does it profit a merle, a man, to lose his soul and gain the world? Like, what is it going to do for you at the end? Is it worth you being pimped out? Is it worth you selling your soul? Because that's what you're doing. You are praying to a pagan god. You sold your soul. Whether you know it or not, the moment you signed that oath, you sold your soul. Then you got to go through hell and hot water just to get it back. If it's even possible. Because you have a lot of Divine Nine members who are extremely demonic. 
And just because you denounce your membership, and I am very proud of you for doing that, please focus on cleansing your soul. Cleanse it. Because you sold it when you signed that oath, whether you know it or not. You sold your soul and you turned your back on the Most High God the moment you bent down and bowed your knee to a pagan idol. You sold your soul. And sometimes I think to myself, how weak-minded and desperate do you have to be to sit there and endure this type of torture? just so you can wear some pretty colors and dance cute. Please pass this video along to anyone that is thinking about joining any of the Divine Nine or any Masonic organization, period. Remain unbothered.